Hello everyone. Hey guys, this is your Jay Educator Mega, and today I'm there to discuss with you the ionization energy. This is going to be a very very interesting session. You just please be stay uh, tuned with me throughout the session so that you learn about this property and its periodic trend and the irregularity thoroughly. So here this topic has been taken from the chapter periodicity in properties and here let me give you a quick insight that what this session is going to cover. We'll have a focus over the ionization energy. We'll see the successive ionization energy. What happens when we remove one electron, the another electron, the another electron? What are the factors that affects the ionization energy? What do you mean by the inert pair effect? And what is its role in determining the IE, that is ionization energy? What are the variations in ionization energy? Means I will be letting you know that guys, what happens when we move from left to right along a period, or what happens when we move from top to bottom along a group? Okay. And the irregular irregularity which has been seen in the period number two elements, and even the irregularity which has been seen in the group number thirteen and the fourteen elements. You know, group number thirteen is basically considered as the most disturbing group. So yes, here. There is a variation in the ionization energy. So basically, if you will understand this particular point uh, in a better way, you will be able to understand everything very easily. Okay. So here, what are the factors that affect ionization energy? My whole emphasis is going to be on this particular point. Okay. So guys, let me give you a quick idea that what is ionization energy. Ionization energy can also be termed as the ionization potential, means the potential or the power which has been required to remove an electron from the outermost loosely held shell. Okay, so basically we want to remove the electron which has been loosely held by the nuclei. Okay, so whatever be the amount of energy which is being required to remove an electron from the outermost shell of an atom, which is loosely held, is known as the ionization energy. So basically, as the name of this ionization, the word says ions. Basically, we want to create ions, and this is an atomic property. This is the property of an atom. Okay, so yes, guys, this is the property of an atom. So basically, from atom. we want to create an ion so let me tell you a quick uh, idea that what does it really mean so let's say i have taken a sodium atom okay please uh, don't bother about this line if we take a sodium atom so what is the electronic configuration of sodium atom it is going to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 and then this is going to be 3s1 so when i see for this electronic configuration what i will found is This is the innermost shell. Then we have the two s two two p six, and this is the outermost shell that is the three s one. So if I ask you, बच्चे, that what is the loose, what is the which is the most loosely held uh, electron? Then your answer would be the three s one because this is very 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 away from the nucleus. So this is the loosely held electron. So the amount of energy which is being needed to release the most loosely bonded electron. So basically, first we need to identify the most loosely bonded electron. Then which will definitely be available in the last shell from an isolated gaseous atom. So as I told you that this is a sodium atom. This is an atom. I have not taken any molecule like NaCl or anything like NaF something. I have taken a gaseous atom. Okay, only atom. Okay, in its ground state. Yes, guys, this is a very very um, absolute and the required thing that the sodium atom or any other atom has to be in its gaseous state. Okay, so this is an atomic property for which the the atom needs to be in its gaseous state, in its ground state, and it must be an isolated gaseous atom. So the energy which is being required to remove an electron, which is loosely held by the nucleus. So basically, I want to remove this particular electron, the three s one electron. Then. i will be getting a species like na positive plus one electron so there will be the loss of one electron and from the sodium atom i will be getting its ion that is the na positive so this is it so here whatever be the amount of energy which has been required to get this done is known as the ionization energy so this is that simple okay so when you will look for the ionization energy when you will look for the electronic configuration of this na positive this comes out to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 this is it yes we done so similarly 
any any element any element or you can say any metal whenever it is in its gaseous isolated state okay uh, when we remove the first electron this has been considered as the ionization energy one okay this will gives us the species which is m positive still this will uh, remain in its gaseous state then we will be removing the one more electron we will be getting m plus 2 then again we can remove one more electron then this will give us the m plus 3 so yes guys we can remove successive electrons it's not necessary that we can only remove the this first electron now we can remove the electron which are present into the 2s2 and 2p6 orbitals then we can also remove the electrons which are present in the 1s2 orbitals but what we need to know is this is known as the successive ionization energy means removal of first electron then the another electron then the another electron so this was the outermost electron the most loosely held electron okay so basically here when you remove the first electron this is known as the ionization energy one when you remove the second electron this is known as the ionization energy two ionization energy three and so on so on so on you will be getting the ionization energy n now here we need to know that why the ionization energy is increasing why there is a sign of increase why guys think like that when i'm talking about m and when i'm talking about m positive okay so if you're talking about the size of an atom and if you're talking about the size of an ion so this ion is basically having a m positive this means that if i take this as a sodium here i'm having 11 protons and i'm having 11 electrons but here in the case of m positive i'm having 11 protons but only 10 electrons so ultimately the number of electron decreases so uh, the more nuclear charge will be there so effective nuclear charge increases and because of this effective nuclear charge increases the size decreases are you getting my point because here the, 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 these are the both the species which are having the same number of protons but the number of electrons are less so the species where we are we will be having the proton electron ratio greater then that particular species will be having more z effective and because of more z effective electron gets more tightly held okay so if you will look for the size of m this will be this much bigger if you will be looking for the size of m positive this becomes smaller m plus 2 more smaller m plus 3 more smaller okay so here the size is decreased so when the size decreases when the size decreases the electrons gets more tightly held by the nucleus and so therefore a large amount of energy is required to remove the electron from the last outermost shell or whatever the shell you are removing so here we are saying that as the size decreases the ionization energy jumps up okay so that's how whenever you will be removing the successive electrons the ionization energy will always be increasing increasing and increasing okay or in general we can say that ionization energy which has been required by the electron which is present in the nth shell that is the last shell is less as compared to that of the ionization energy which has been required by the n plus shell that is the inner shells okay so n plus 1 so n plus 1 is because if you are talking about 2 so we can say that this is 1 plus 1 if you are talking about 3 we can say that this is 2 plus 1 okay so n is going to be that particular number now what are the factors that affects the ionization energy as of now i just talked about the size of the atom so if the size of the atom is bigger then it getting smaller 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 then definitely the large amount of energy is being required by an atom which is smallest in size why because here the electrons are very very tightly held by the nucleus so therefore this this atom which is very very small in size has high ionization energy okay so as the size decreases we can say that as the size decreases the ionization energy the ionization energy increases okay we can say that so this means that here the ionization energy and the size is having the inverse relationship right absolutely so ionization energy and size is having the inverse relationship now not only the ionization energy there is one more factor which is the effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge basically what happens is why there is a decrease in size if we are moving from period number two that is if we are moving from left to right we know that here the z effective increases 
and as the z effective increases the size decreases so what happens the z effective increases the effective nuclear charge increases if the nucleus is becoming more powerful and it is attracting the electrode more tightly then definitely more energy is required to remove the electron so if the z effective increases ionization energy also increases this simply means that ionization energy and z effective are directly proportional to each other i hope you got the point now the third factor that affects is the principal quantum number principal quantum number basically the energy you know the energy of the shells n the value of n so if i am talking about this is my nucleus this is n is equals to 1 2 3 4 this is n is equals to 1 n is equals to 2 n is equals to 3 n is equals to 4 so if i ask you bachche that when the value of n increases 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 so when the value of n increases that is let's say the value of n is 4 then it will be easy to remove an electron or it will be difficult to remove an electron when the value of n increases it becomes easy to remove an electron means less amount of energy is required to remove an electron are you getting my point because when the value of n is 1 then this shell is very very close to the nucleus so this nucleus will hold the electron more tightly will hold the electron more tightly when the electrons will be in n is equals to 1 so as the value of n increases 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 it goes away from the nucleus and when it goes away from the nucleus it is loosely held by the nucleus so it becomes easy for us to remove an electron from the outermost shell so here i can say that uh, as the value of n increases the ionization energy decreases so again what kind of relationship we have observed that ionization energy and n is inversely proportional to each other great now let's talk about the penetration effect what do you mean by the penetration effect this is the effect which led the orbital to go more close to the nucleus okay so this is a effect which is been shown by the orbitals okay so penetration effect and the shielding effect both are the effects of the orbitals okay they are not uh, for the n the principal quantum number they are not for any other thing they are for the shapes of orbitals so whatever shapes we have we have s orbital we have p orbital we have d orbital and we have f orbital okay so when you talk about the shapes of the orbitals you will find that uh, the s orbital which is very very spherical in shape uh, this has a highest penetration power okay yes s orbital is intent to get more close to the nucleus okay so this has highest penetration power than the p orbital than the t orbital than the f orbital f orbital is most diffused f orbital is most diffused it's very very large in size and this orbital is very very much diffused so this goes away from the nucleus okay and this s orbital is spherical and uh, very small in size this has highest penetration effect this goes more close to the nucleus now what happens with the penetration effect if this orbital goes more close to the nucleus then of course it will be very difficult for us to remove an electron from the s orbital so that's how i can say that as the penetration effect increases as the penetration effect increases as the electron gets more close to the s orbital or more close more close to the nucleus the ionization energy increases means more amount of energy is required to remove an electron so ultimately we can say that ionization energy and the penetration effect are directly proportional to each other we got the relationship now what do you mean by the shielding effect shielding effect is basically the effect which can which could be caused by the inner shell electrons because of which because of which the nuclear attraction decreases right because of which uh, the nuclear attraction decreases when the electro electron repulsion increases in the inner shell electrons so basically what happens is if the inner shell electrons will be doing the maximum electron electron repulsion and they are very strongly shielding means they are protecting if here this is my nucleus and this is the last electron and in the inner shells i am having many electrons which are shielding my last electron from the effect of the nucleus okay so here i have so many number of electrons and these electrons are protecting my last electron from the effect of the nucleus if this if the shielding is very good if the shielding is very good 
now we know we need to know who do our very good shielding guys again s orbital is having a very very good shielding effect than the p orbital than the d orbital than the f orbital so if s orbital is having a very very strong shielding effect so if we are talking about the s orbital and it is strongly shielding the last electron from the effect of the nucleus then this electron is loosely held because the nucleus is having no control over the last electron because they are working as a shield so if these inner shell electrons are working as a shield means this nucleus has no uh, no way of control over this last electron so this electron can be easily removed so ionization energy will be low so when the shielding is strong so we, i can say that when the shielding effect is very very strong the removal of electron becomes easy means ionization energy will be lower okay means less amount of energy will be required to remove an electron but if the shielding effect becomes poor means these electrons are not properly shielding they are away from each other and they are not protecting the electron from the uh, from the effect of a nucleus then what will happen this nucleus will attract the last electron towards itself more strongly and when it attracts the electron more strongly then what will happen the more amount of energy is required to remove an electron so this means that if the shielding becomes poor if the shielding effect decreases then electron gets tightly held and the electron gets tightly held more amount of energy means the ionization energy increases are you getting my point so shielding effect and the ionization energy are inversely proportional to each other because when one increase the other decrease okay so they have a inverse relationship now the last is the stability of configuration now what do you mean by that guys if i'm talking about the stability of configuration this simply means that uh, ki whenever you will be having your p3 orbital you will be having your p6 d5 or d10 orbitals or f7 or f14 orbitals so they are either half filled or they are fully filled okay this is half filled this is fully filled half filled fully filled okay so whenever we will be having such orbitals which are half filled and fully filled so they have the same degeneracy okay these are the degenerate orbitals having the same energy same energy means more stability so because of this half filled and fully filled orbitals they becomes more stable they are extra stable and when they are extra stable then it becomes very difficult to remove an electron in such a way so whenever you will be getting p3 p6 d5 d10 f7 f14 half filled or fully filled orbitals they will be having the very very high ionization energy okay so i hope all these factors that affects the ionization energy is very very clear to all of you so here we can move ahead guys before moving forward and looking for the irregularity or the general trend that we could see in the case of the ionization energy there is one more thing that we need to learn which is the inert pair effect okay so basically i want to tell you i want to teach you about the inert pair effect that what is this effect so to know this inert pair effect let us talk about the relativistic effect so what do you mean by the relativistic effect relativistic means relativity something is doing something with in relationship okay so basically guys we have a, we have a different different shapes of orbitals so this relativistic effect is also a property of the shapes of orbitals that is s p d or f as i told you that s orbital has a has high penetration power and the f orbital is very very much diffused okay so this goes away from the nucleus this goes away from the nucleus and this goes towards nucleus so let's say this is my nucleus this is my nucleus so this s orbital goes towards nucleus and the f orbital goes away from nucleus so this is known as the relativistic effect that is the tendency that is the tendency of the orbital to goes more close to the nucleus means relativistic compression and the orbital which goes away from the nucleus means the orbital having a tendency to expand okay so when the when we are talking about the s orbital so as the size of the atom increases so basically this effect when this effect works this effect basically works when the size of atom increases as we go down the group as we go down the group we could see that uh, um uh there will be the addition of new shells new shells new shells the size of the atom increases because the n value increases so as the size of the atom increases let's say i'm talking about 1 2 3 4 5 6 i'm talking about 6s 4f 
5 d and the 6 p orbital then what we would see we would see that the 6 s orbital here this when the size of the atom increases this s orbital will show the relativistic compression this goes more close to the nucleus why the 6s orbital goes more close to the nucleus this will go more close to the nucleus because s orbital has high penetration effect okay so this will intend to go more close to the nucleus and the d and f and the d and f orbitals okay they have a they have a tendency they are more diffused so they will be showing the relativistic expansion they will go away from the nucleus okay so this is going more close to the nucleus and they, they are going more away from the nucleus they are going away from the nucleus so when this goes close to the nucleus this is known as relativistic compression the relativistic compression and when they goes away from the nucleus the the size of the atom is going to increase so this is known as the relativistic expansion okay so understood what is relativistic expansion and the relativistic compression now let's talk about what is inert pair effect so basically the same example which i have taken so let's say i'm talking about any of the species like uh, uh, boron aluminium gallium indium and the thallium okay i'm talking about the thallium so when i have to write down the electronic configuration of thallium this comes out to be um, 6s2 4f14 5d10 and 6p1 okay so this is the electronic configuration for the thallium so here the size of the thallium is bigger because we know there is a, the addition of new shells so the size of the atom size of the thallium is bigger now size of the atom is increasing now here the n s orbital will show more and more relativistic compression means this s orbital will goes more close to the nucleus okay and when this goes more close to the nucleus this pair of electron this pair of electron will become inert in nature now yes this is the inert pair effect so basically as the size of the atom increases the s orbital shows relativistic compression this goes more close to the nucleus so ultimately if these electrons though if you would see you would find that we are having 4f14 we are having 5d10 then we are having 6s2 and 6p1 so if i ask you bache what would be the ionization energy what would be the last shell electron that you will be removing you would say ma'am 3 hai na because there these are the three electrons which are present in the outermost shell that is 6s2 6s2 uh just a minute let me rub this Uh, yes so what uh, we were writing i was looking writing as 4f14 5d10 and this is 6s2 and this will be 6p1 so these are my large shell electrons which are loosely held by the nucleus but as the size of the atom increases this goes this shows relativistic compression so because the 6s orbital shows relativistic compression here we have two electrons but they are going more close to the nucleus so it will be very very difficult for these electrons to participate in the bond formation so these two electrons will not participate in the bond formation these two electrons are very very difficult to remove or uh, very very large amount of energy is required to remove the, these two electrons so here they don't participate in the bond formation they show poor ability so here these are the ns2 electrons that shows poor ability of bonding so when they will not show the ability of bonding then they will be called as inert they will be called as inert inert means noble noble or you can say non reactive okay so they are not going to participate in any reaction but relatively yeah only and only the this this one electron can be removed or can be uh, can participate in the bond formation so what does this mean the f and the d orbitals are showing the relativistic expansion and the s orbital is showing the relativistic compression and because of this reason because of this relativistic compression this does not participates in the bond formation shows poor ability of bonding and this is known as the inert pair effect now why we call it inert pair as you can see that this is a pair of electron a pair of two electrons so because this is a pair of two electron this is known as inert pair effect okay sometimes people confuse that this is a lone pair but guys no this is not a lone pair okay lone pair is the one which is freely available for the bond formation 
but this is an inactive pair of electrons which is a non bonded pair of electron and which is inactive which cannot participates in the bond formation okay so such electron pair don't cause repulsion it this even can't cause repulsion because it is been compressed towards nucleus so we can say that this is stereochemically inactive lone pair okay so this is about the uh, relativistic effect and the inert pair effect okay so these are the pair of electrons and so therefore they are known as the inert pair effect now what would be the variations in the ionization energy okay so after learning what is ionization energy energy required to remove an electron from the outermost or the loosely held electron uh, from an isolated gaseous atom in its ground state this was the ionization energy looking over the factors that affects the ionization energy like uh, the size z effective and so many factors we come to one conclusion that in general when we will be moving from left to right that is a long a period let's say if you are talking about period number 2 or period number 3 when we are moving from left to right that is lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen chlorine when the size what happens with the size the size decreases when the size decreases as the size decreases the ionization energy increases because the electron gets more tightly held so more energy is required to remove an electron so this is the thing that we would say in general okay in general means in 90% of the cases okay the majority of the cases so whenever we talk about a major major number of cases we use a word general okay we generalize it so when we go down the group as we go down the group the size of the atom increases so the size of the atom increases more number of shells are getting added means the electrons uh, the the distance between the nucleus and the electron is increasing it becomes easy to remove an electron so as the value of n increases as the value of n increases we know that uh, the less amount of energy is required ionization energy decreases so we can say that as the size increases the ionization energy decreases so depending upon the size we have generalized that what happens with the ionization energy now is this all okay or do we need to know f more on this absolutely we need to know more on this guys this was simply a general trend okay now there is lot to do what is let me talk on the period number 2 in the period number 2 basically what has what happens let's have a look lithium to beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon you would say ki when we are moving from left to right the size decreases if the size is uh, decreasing 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 here the size is decreasing then what should happen this is neon you know in the neon there is a van der waal radii i discussed this thing in my previous lecture that is on atomic radii so please have a look on it if you don't know so here neon in the case of neon there is a van der waal radii there is no no the neon size is not small okay so when you look for the when you look for the size of the atom you would say here the size of the atom in decreases so the ionization ha energy has to increase 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 you would say that this has to increase this has to increase but in absolute terms we found something difference okay so what is the difference that we have found let's have a look okay just a minute it is getting messy so let us do this again okay so what we have actually found is so we found a irregularity we found that here this beryllium and boron and this nitrogen and oxygen are showing some abnormality and here also the neon and the fluorine why why is it so let's have a look guys from lithium to beryllium you were saying ki the order has to be this but we actually found okay this is 2s1 this is 2s2 here the number of electron is getting added but at the same time the number of proton is also increasing right if you would see the lithium here we have three protons and the three electrons three protons three electrons and here we have a four protons and four electrons okay so the number of proton is also getting added so of course the z effective increases the size becomes smaller so ionization energy has to be greater okay fine this is done lithium uh, and beryllium if you would compare then beryllium will be having the more ionization energy absolutely this is this is this is fine to say okay now let us look for the another molecule the if we compare between the beryllium and boron 
so guys when we compare between the beryllium and boron there was one thing because whenever we remove electron we have to see that from which orbital we are removing electron so here we are removing electron from the 2s2 orbital and here we are removing electron from the 2p1 orbital they had 2 and 2 the and the value of n is same but here the orbital is s and here the orbital is p so is it easy to remove an electron from the s orbital or is it easy to remove an electron from the p orbital what would be your answer if there is a change in orbitals then guys it's always easy to remove an electron from the p orbital because s orbital shows more penetration effect it has a tendency to go more close to the nucleus so because here the penetration effect dominates s orbital has more penetration effect than the p orbital s orbital has more penetration effect than the p orbital and because of this certain reason what will happen the ionization energy of beryllium will be greater than that of the boron because more energy is required to remove an electron from beryllium rather than boron so this is an important case okay so here please remember beryllium ionization energy is greater than boron and this is a question which could be asked maximum number of times in your j paper okay so here is the reason so why you only look for only one single factor that is size there are so many factors guys so we need to consider all of them okay so being a j aspirant this is a difference that you have to build now let's have a comparison between the boron and oxygen so this is 2p1 this is 2p1 2 2p p okay fine one electron two electron means one electron is getting added up and the one proton is also getting added up so no other change absolutely we could say the z effective increases the size decreases and when when the size decreases more amount of energy is required okay it was a simple general trend no issues with that now what about the carbon and nitrogen okay please don't confuse this is carbon okay or let me remove the circle i just made it made it as a size now so okay so uh, when i'm talking about the carbon and nitrogen here this is 2p2 and here this is 2p3 so you know in the p orbital we have the three subshells and this is 1 2 3 and this is half fill configuration and when you are having any kind of half fill in the fully filled configuration we have seen no in the case of the factors that affects the ionization energy that whenever we will be having the half fill or the fully filled configurations then there will be more stability so this is the case here so uh, what we would say that the half fill and the fully filled configurations are going to be the more stable so ultimately when the nitrogen uh, configuration is more stable it requires more amount of energy to remove an electron so definitely nitrogen is will be having more ionization energy as compared to that of the carbon now when we compare between the nitrogen and oxygen then what what happens look for the electronic configuration this is 2s2 2p3 so here and this is 2s2 2p4 so if you would look for these two orbitals 2s2 2p3 and 2s2 2p4 what you would compare this is p3 which is again half filled and this is p4 so here we have a repulsion of electron c this is something like this 1 2 3 and 4 so there we are this this fourth electron is actually undergoing repulsion okay because electron and electron they are the like charges and they will try to repel when they will be filled in the same subshell okay so there we will be having a repulsion so less amount of energy is required to remove an electron from the oxygen but here in the case of nitrogen this is the half filled configuration which is extra stable so if it is extra stable more amount of energy is required so when you compare between the nitrogen and oxygen in the case of nitrogen more ionization energy is required as compared to that of the oxygen so this is the case that we need to know okay now let's have a look over the oxygen and fluorine oxygen fluorine this is 2p4 2p5 okay fine the same p orbital no extra factor no penetration effect no shielding effect no uh, stability of configuration nothing else hai na? so only z effective is dominating so only z effective increases the size decreases size decreases means ionization energy increases so here we could easily say the ionization energy of fluorine is greater than that of the oxygen now here comes the last and the most important scenario if you compare between the fluorine and neon now guys you know you would say ma'am neon size is bigger this will require less ionization energy no please don't do this kind of bullshit 
here you please focus over the don't don't uh, the, you really think think that size is a more dominating factor here no the size is not a most dominating factor here the point is neon this is neon this is neon and neon is having the 2p6 kind of configuration this is a noble gas which is having the inert this they are also known as the inert gases they are non reactive they don't even react okay they have the most stable configurations they are 2p6 so when all the electrons are paired and the Uh, and the electrons are completely filled uh, these are the degenerate orbitals of same energies they are extra 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 stable so ultimately guys very 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 large amount of energy is required to remove an electron from the neon and even you can't even found any compound of neon because neon's electron don't even participates in the bond formation this is this much in order nature okay so here highest amount of ionization energy is required we could say more 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 so don't go over, go over its size okay so here which factor dominates here the stability factor dominates so basically whenever we get a question we have to compare it thoroughly okay guys if you would say ki ma'am in the case of s orbital do we have half filled or fully filled ka concept no guys s orbitals are basically spherical in shape spherical means sphere just like a ball okay just in the in in the case of a ball the gas is equally distributed throughout the ball the similar way the electrons are thoroughly distributed in the s orbital okay so here there is no concept of half filled or fully filled if one electron is there or two electrons are there they have the same stability okay the half filled and the fully filled configurations are only for the p orbital for the d orbital and for the f orbital okay when this is p3 or this is p6 when this is d5 or d10 or when this is f7 or f14 what's the reason because the p orbital is not spherical here the electrons are not equally distributed the p orbital is dumbbell shape so the electron could either be here or either could be here okay so the in the p orbital the electrons are not equally distributed it has a node it has a node okay so that's why the stability factor comes for the pdf orbital not for the s orbital so ultimately we have come to this particular conclusion that the lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine nitrogen is going to be the most uh, uh, is going to be the having the high ionization energy as compared to that of the carbon and oxygen both and here the beryllium is going to be having the more ionization energy because of the more penetration effect um, caused by the s orbital okay so here the order will become this and here the order will become this ठीक है सो वट एवर द वे वे दिस इज ऑल्सो राइट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो राइट ओके सो फोर द वे यू कैन राइट इट सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दैट वॉट क्वेश्चन कम्स इन योर पेपर नाउ वी हैव डन विद द इरेगुलरिटी विच कुड बी सीन इन द पीरियड नंबर टू एलिमेंट्स नाउ देर इज वन मोर इरेगुलरिटी दैट वी हैव टू फोकस दैट कुड बी सीन इन द ग्रुप नंबर थर्टीन एंड द फोर्टीन मतलब आई मेजरली से ग्रुप नंबर थर्टीन ओके ग्रुप नंबर थर्टीन एलिमेंट्स सो बेसिकली वॉट हैपन्स इज If we will be talking about the boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, and thallium. So first of all, write down. Uh, let us write down their electronic configuration. This is 2s to 2p1. This is 3s to 3p1. This is 4s to 4p1. So when I am, I will be writing 4s to 4p1. I must also write 3d10. Okay. So here in the case of the gallium, we have filled 3d orbital. Just a second. We have a. Yes. All good. So we have a filled three d ten electrons. Okay, then this is going to be the four d ten five s two five p one, and then this is going to be the four f fourteen five d ten six s two and six p one. Okay, so if you have watched my atomic radii lecture, then you probably know we found that because of this d ten electrons, because of these ten d electrons, there was a poor shielding and because of that poor shielding there was a scandite contraction the nucleus will be able to attract the electron more tightly and because of this reason we found that the boron size is this much the aluminum size increases but then after the size has to increase as the number of shells are increasing but we found that the gallium becomes smaller in size the reason being 
the reason being poor shielding poor shielding caused by the 3d orbital okay the size decreases and then after the indium the size increases and in the case of thallium we expect the size has to increase but what we again found we again found that in the case of the thallium there is a poor shielding by the f orbital the 14 f orbital and because of this poor shielding the nucleus attract the last electron and so therefore the size of thallium and indium becomes almost the same so this becomes the same okay now here the question is not about the atomic size here the question is about the ionization energy okay so guys in general you say ki as the value of n increases n increases the ionization energy decreases means less amount of energy is required to remove an electron because the electrons are getting away from the nucleus but here here comes the ambiguity ambiguity means here comes the irregularity what is in the case of the gallium what has happened in the case of a gallium we found that because of this candide contraction the gallium size is abnormally small so when the gallium size is abnormally small if the size of the gallium is getting smaller and so therefore the electrons are getting more tightly held so ultimately the ionization energy of gallium is higher the ionization energy of gallium is higher okay so the ionization energy so gallium will be having more ionization energy as that of the aluminum we can say that if the comparison is for the ionization energy then we would say that gallium is having more ionization energy as compared to that of the aluminum you would say gallium must have low because the uh, the n value increases but no 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 because of this candide contraction the electrons are getting more tightly held the size is getting smaller so more amount of energy is been required by the gallium okay now what about comes with the thallium now here here this happens that is the lanthanide contraction the poor shielding by the 4f14 electrons and because of this reason the electrons are getting more tightly held now here there is a more electron density right indium and thallium they both are having the same sizes but the thallium is having more electron density electrons are more tightly held so because of this reason thallium will be having more ionization energy as that of that of the indium so we can also say that thallium is having more ionization energy than that of the indium okay because of the lanthanide contraction i hope you got the point so basically whenever there will be poor shielding because of the for because of the 3d or the 4f electrons then that this increases the z effective if there will be the poor shielding by the inertial electrons the nucleus will be able to attract the last electron more strongly okay so this is what happens so here the z effective increases and so therefore ionization energy increases more energy is required to remove an electron now here if someone ask you what is the correct order then then we found that the gallium and the thallium the gallium and the thallium they both were very very irregular in their trend okay so what is the exact trend if we want to know guys the boron because the boron is absolutely because this is of the second shell so the second shell is very very close to the nucleus and so therefore boron is having the highest ionization energy but then after comes your thallium yes absolutely you would be surprised to see but yes the thallium is having the ionization energy then after thallium because they were abnormal no they both were abnormal and then after comes the gallium gallium and after gallium we all know ki after the gallium and aluminum the aluminum will be having the less ionization energy and the very very less ionization energy can be uh, can be required by the indium okay so indium comes here so the very very less amount of ionization energy is being required by the indium i hope you got the point why boron is having the highest because this is of the second shell smallest in size okay if you would compare all the sizes yes boron is very very small that's the reason then here comes the thallium okay so this this order you need to remember that what actually happens so basically you need to know two things yeah gallium and thallium because of this candide and the lanthanide contraction they are smaller and so therefore they will be having abnormally high ionization energies okay let's move forward with the group number 14 elements if i will be focusing over the group number 14 elements guys let me tell you here also we have the carbon you would say ma'am we do have uh, 2s2 2p2 we have uh, 3s2 3p 3p2 we have uh, 3d10 4s2 4p2 we have uh, 4d10 
5 is to 5 p 2 and here we have 6 uh, sorry 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 we have 4 f 14 5 d 10 6 is to 6 p 2 okay so this is uh, i think i did something wrong no it's all fine and i'm good enough so you would say ma'am here also we will be having a d orbital and here we have the f orbital so there also we will be having the scandite and the lanthanide contraction then guys let me tell you one thing the scandite contraction is going to be till gallium only okay not after that so basically uh, if i show you one of my previous slide uh, if i show you one of the previous slide here you please focus that the gallium if you are talking about this particular series because of this particular d10 1 to 10 d1 to 10 electrons there will be poor shielding and they are going to affect only gallium okay the impact will not be over the the, the, the germanium or arsenic or selenium only gallium will get affected and here in the case of the period number 6 if you will be talking about the poor shielding by the 14 f electrons so these are basically our 14 f electrons which are doing a poor shielding so the effect of poor shielding by the 14 uh, 14 4f electron is over the hafnium tantalum tungsten okay re os ir pt au hg thallium pb and bi so the impact will be seen till here okay so means the scandite contraction is going to impact only gallium but the lanthanoid contraction is going to impact all the other elements just after the lanthanoid series so that's how lanthanoid contraction is a very very major contributor okay so the effect of lanthanoid contraction so if we are talking about the group number 14 in the group number 14 which element is going to be disturbed only the lead only the lead is going to be disturbed rest will not get disturbed okay because here the they are not disturbing and only the lanthanoid series is disturbing the lead so here uh, let's move back to that particular thing and let's have a look that what happens in the case of group number 14 so only the the impact can be caused over the lead sorry 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 okay can be seen over the lead okay so here we could say that the ionization energy will be highest for the carbon of course second shell very close to the nucleus so more energy is required to remove an electron then in as compared to that of the silicon uh, silicon then the germanium then sn must be but here we found that in the pp there will be the poor shielding by the 4f electrons then the nucleus will held the electron more tightly so ultimately when the electrons are more tightly held here we have the lanthanoid contraction so its ionization energy will be greater than that of the sn okay so here the thallium goes till there but the pp will remain there okay so here we could say that the group number 13 majorly group number 13 is the most disturbing group it has maximum abnormalities abnormality in a size abnormality in ionization energy okay so these are the two things that is the lanthanoid and the scandite contraction every student must know okay so here guys let us see okay we have look for the uh, we have look for the for the period number 2 we have look for the disturbing groups like group number 13 group number 14 i told you about the noble gases what happens in the case of noble gases they are extremely inert so no matter what uh, what size they have the ionization energy is going to be the highest for them now let us have a look over the uh, the group number 1 it's very easy uh, very 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 easy only one thing i want to tell you uh, lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium okay so first of all this is this comes in period number 2 3s1 4s1 5s1 6s1 so first of all guys francium is not an s block element okay so if you compare this particular series then please compare it till cesium okay because it's very very required because they are the s block elements they are the alkali metals francium is a radioactive element so francium is radioactive in nature Francium is radioactive in nature. So, if you are talking about the size, lithium is smaller, then sodium becomes larger, 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 and largest. So, cesium is of largest size. The size of the cesium is highest. Okay. So, this is the largest species. 
so when the size of the cesium is largest its ionization energy is going to be very 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 low okay so cesium has the lowest ionization energy and this is the most important fact among all the periodic elements that cesium is the species cs is the species having the lowest ionization energy sorry you please correct it guys lowest i really don't know why is this so happening uh but i would say you please be tolerate uh please tolerate this thing with me okay uh, uh cesium that is the lowest ionization energy okay so guys we could say that uh, here when you are moving from uh, top to bottom that is from lithium to friendship the size increasing so therefore the ionization energy decreases okay so decreases you would say the friendship will be having the lowest ionization energy you would expect that this must be your expectation ki that friendship would be having the lowest ionization energy because it is largest in size but no guys but no no uh friendship will not be having the lowest ionization energy cesium will be having the lowest ionization energy friendship is an extremely unstable element because this is the radioactive in nature okay so we won't consider friendship i hope the point is very clear so we can say that li na k rab i l i n a k r b f r and c s cesium is having the lowest ionization energy okay not friendship friendship is radioactive so this is extremely unstable now uh we are all done with the ionization energies okay i told you about every regularity and everything has been just covered okay so now this is just an example to make you understand the success of ionization energy that how the things works so guys if you will look for the sodium atom this is 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s1 so first of all if you are talking about the first ionization energy that is the removal of first electron you will be getting 2p6 1s2 2s2 1s2 2s2 and 2p6 okay then you are removing another electron this is known as the ionization energy 2 and this will give you the 2p5 so if you would see the ionization energy 1 and ionization energy 2 the ionization energy 1 is going to be very 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 less than the ionization energy 2 so why is this so the reason be here the na positive has um, uh has got the stable noble gas configuration so here you will be getting a big jump in the ionization energy why there is a big jump because of the stable noble gas configuration okay so whenever we have a valence shell electron these valence shell electrons are very easy to remove okay if any species is having 10 number of electrons yeah you can remove 10 electrons you will be having ionization energy 1 to 10 but i am talking about a big jump so whenever there will be the uh, the valence shell electrons are very easy to remove but after that once you reach the stable noble gas configuration the ionization energy becomes very very high that's how i am saying that the ionization energy 2 ie 2 for this na positive is very very higher than that of the ie 1 okay i hope you got my point then i can remove one more electron this will be ie3 and will give you na positive 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 and 2p4 so this way you can remove n number of electrons similarly you can do for the magnesium this is 3s2 you have to move one electron ie1 for magnesium you have to move another electron ie2 for magnesium absolutely ie1 is going to be less than the ie2 why because the first electron the removal of first electron is always easier because when this becomes ng positive the size of the atom decreases this is the cationic species and if you have studied the ionic size then you definitely know the size of ng positive is smaller because more protons and less electrons so high effective z effective so size decreases so when the size decreases the ionization energy increases absolutely so when you remove one more electron it becomes 2p6 so ठीक है दैट इज द आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी टू वी आर टॉकिंग ऑन ओके बट सिंस यू विल बी रिमूविंग वन मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट इज द आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी थ्री नाउ यू आर रिमूविंग इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम द टू पी सिक्स कॉन्फिग्रेशन विच इज एक्सट्रीमली स्टेबल एक्सट्रीमली इनर्ट सो हेयर यू विल बी गेटिंग अ बिग 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 जम्प इन द केस ऑफ द आयनाइजेशन एनर्जी थ्री आई एम सो फेड अप विद दिस पेन आई एम आई रियली डोंट नो वाई इज दिस वर्किंग लाइक दिस 
सो बेसिकली आई होप यू गॉट द पॉइंट आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू मेक अ पॉइंट दैट द आई ई वन इज लेस दैन दैट ऑफ द आई ई टू द आइनाइजेशन एनर्जी इज इंक्रीजिंग बट इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द आइनाइजेशन एनर्जी थ्री द एनर्जी इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी 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 हाई सो हेयर वी विल बी गेटिंग अ बिग जम्प सो दिस बिग जम्प आई होप यू आर अंडरस्टूड दैट वॉट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड इट okay you could also be getting the questions like for the j you will also be getting some questions like what happens what is the comparison between the i e one of this and this okay let me remove it um yes okay so now let's have a look that what happens in the case of the ionization the first ionization energy for the sodium and the first ionization energy for the magnesium here you were removing the last electron which is very very easy to remove than that of the magnesium if you would compare the sodium is larger in size as that of the magnesium so of course its ionization energy is going to be less than that of the magnesium the question could ask you compare the second ionization energy of sodium and the compare the second ionization energy of magnesium guys here in the case of the ie2 of sodium you are removing an electron from the stable configuration right but here you are not removing electron from the stable configuration so ie2 for sodium will be greater than that of the magnesium if you are talking about ie3 similarly you can compare you are removing electron from 2p5 which is quite easy but removing electron from 2p6 configuration is very difficult this is stable fully filled configuration so the ionization energy 3 for the magnesium will be higher okay now similarly you can do for the ie4 4 for the sodium and magnesium so this is it an element can have many ionization energies as the number of electrons present in it whatever be the number of electrons that could be the number of ionization energies but whenever the valence shell electrons gets uh, gets loose you you will be getting a big jump in the ionization energies okay so this is it this is it i hope you understood the point so guys the last part is whenever you need to find out the as per the as per the quantum mechanics whenever you need to find out the ionization energy for any hydrogen like system any hydrogen like system i mean to say one electron system hydrogen is having only one uh, zero proton and even one electron okay uh, sorry 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 what i'm saying zero neutron and only one proton and one electron okay so when i'm talking about the one electron system like ah he positive li2 positive b plus 3 for such species for the such one electron species we could have the ionization energy can also be calculated by this formula which you might have studied in the chapter atomic structure 13.6 into z square by n square electron volt per atom and for the multi electron system if you need to find the same you just replace this z by z effective because here when there is a multi electron system there will be the shielding effect there will be the penetration effect so ultimately uh, we know that the z effective is equals to z minus sigma so just just subtract the shielding effect okay if there is a strong shielding then what will happen the z minus sigma will become a small value that is the z effective decreases okay so the shielding actually affects so when you have a multi electron system because in the multi electron system only the shielding effect works uh, shielding is a property in the multi electron system okay so you can calculate it by this formula so simple you just put the values of z effective they might be given to you in the paper and n is the number of shell that in which the electron is present this is it if you put the value you will be getting your answer so uh, yeah this is all about so here we do have the properties of ionization energy that what is the application of ionization energy how the ionization energy affects the other factors like metallic metallic character or the reactivity of metals or the reducing power of elements which i will be discussing with you in one of my another lecture so thank you so much guys i hope you learned uh, this particular topic the ionization energy and you enjoyed the session well so if is it really so then thank you so much i would uh, be very happy if uh, Uh, this lecture brings a smile over your face so guys please like subscribe and share because uh, this is only the way you will be able to express your feelings your emotions towards my lecture and uh, your uh, effort of uh, you whatever the step that you took uh, to subscribe to either like or subscribe the channel or sharing this video will definitely motivates me and uh, 
help me to build to create more engaging and more explanatory sessions for you guys so thank you so much for you all uh, you do follow me on an academy for my plus lectures for the itj category and guys here is my profile so you please don't forget to follow me here this is it thank you let's crack it be ready for my next video which is going to be released very soon